Madonna horror complex we are talking about today. All men, to some degree, have this. All men agree that there are good girls and there are bad girls. But as men mature, this separation levels out. However, today we are talking about men who carries this complex throughout their life in this very charged, wounded manner. How do you know it's a problem? You know because it causes you problems and it causes problems and suffering to the women around you. Men with Madonna whore complex divide women strictly into two categories. Madonnas, someone that he marries, this beautiful, pure, noble, righteous woman whose mouth cannot be bedraggled with my dirty sperm, dirty thoughts, my penis, because this mouth will be kissing my children, and into whores, these promiscuous, fallen, dirty women who I can express all my lusty, dirty desires onto, but I will never marry. I despise them even. They are where they belong, and I will punish them for that. I will rip them apart and come all over their dirty faces. So let's investigate why these men the way they are and where does this Madonna whore complex takes its roots. Before we begin, please consider to subscribe, like it, share it with anyone who needs it. My name is Katusha and let's begin. A little boy is born and his mother is everything to him. It's his entire universe. It's his goddess, the warmth of her body, the warmth of her milk, the beauty of her eyes, the glossiness of her hair, her scent. I'm feeling all of this and my penis is erect, right? Little boys' penises are erect since they're born. It's normal. They have all these emotions and feelings. They don't know. They don't separate them. They don't know what they are. They're just feeling what they are feeling. But very soon, social norms start to invade this perfect relationship with this little boy's mom. So now the things that was normal and allowed aren't anymore. For example, I'm now supposed to wear my underwear. I cannot sleep with my mother or I cannot sleep naked with my mother. If my penis gets erect looking at her, touching her, it's wrong. I'm scolded for that. I can't touch her anymore. It's wrong. Uh, my mother doesn't hold my pee-pee while I'm peeing anymore. My mother does ma doesn't wash me in the bathtub anymore. Uh, everybody laughs at me or tells me that's wrong when I say, I'm going to marry you, right? Little boy said that to their mom at a certain age. They say, mommy, I'm, when I'm going to grow up, I'm going to marry you. You are my woman, right? And all he hears are giggles or scolding for that. So all this physicality, all this sexual feelings, desire now are not allowed and get they get pushed out i can still love and admire play not in a sexual way with my mom she's this beautiful still beautiful goddess that i can emotionally be connected to but my sexual desire has to go somewhere else now this is normal boys and girls we all are supposed to be socialized but in addition add to this mix some sort of trauma it can be acute or it can be subtle. For example, in this family, the father cheats on the mom. And the little boy knows and sees that. It's known, he knows that the father is cheating. It causes tremendous amount of suffering to his mom. So he projects this hatred onto his father and onto those promiscuous whores that make my mother miserable, that ruin, destroy my family, right? So it gets more charged, that split. Or it can be more subtle than this. If a boy is growing up in this family of uh, very rational, not very feeling like sensual people, mathematicians or IT people or engineers where physical touch is not in the picture, right? We, we don't touch, we don't hug, we don't kiss in this family. It, it, leave it for, for someone else. No, I'm your mom, I'm your dad, so this cold mother who does, who feeds him, who uh, educates him, but who does not like to be touched, right? It can be more subtle than this. These are just two examples. So now you see how the split occurs. This is especially pronounced in certain cultures. 
I grew up, I was born and grew up uh, the first 10 years of my life in the Soviet Union. And I'm Slavic, but then on the south of Soviet Union, now partially Russia, or now those republic are separate countries. Um, we call them Caucasian men, but Caucasian is a different word and meaning in uh, English. Those are the men who like Eastern, Middle Eastern descent from uh, Armenia, Georgia, uh, Chechen, Dagestan. I studied with them in Moscow, so I, I, I remember how they treated us. So these men, they only marry women of their own origin, only. I'm going to marry someone of my own who is brought up with uh, my tradition, who will worship me, who will cook the right way that I need her to cook, who is this pure, noble, smart woman that I can rely on and trust. But my desires will not be directed at you. My desires will be directed at Natasha, some promiscuous whore, blonde chick that I want to execute, not execute, to, well, execute my deepest, my deepest lust onto her and come all over her face and berate her because she deserves that. This kind of behavior is normalized in, in those cultures, right? Yeah, that's what men do. They're supposed to have a wife that will bury my children, whose mouth will not be bedraggled by my dirty sperm, and I will have a mistress that I can fulfill my deepest lust with. So they adapt to this, but who suffers the most? Women suffer the most. The wife wants to be desired and wants to be fucked. And then the mistress doesn't want to pick up crumbs she wants a full life, she wants a husband, and she wants children. So how do we fix this dynamic? What do we do? Gentlemen, I will leave this for my next video. But before, I also will shoot a video uh, about the conflict that women suffer with. You're not alone in this. There's this other compl complex that's called the night beast complex, where the girl marries this reliable, good guy who she knows she can rely on, who can provide for her and for her children. But men, my desires will be directed at some beast outside, whether he is this dirty bum or this sex electrician or the psychopath who drives me nuts but activates all my senses, right? <laughs> So how do we live happier lives? <laughs> we live, all of us can live happier lives if we can integrate and put these energies, both energies, both visions together, right? I'll leave it for the next video. Okay, thank you so much for staying until the end. Uh, please don't forget to download your testicle massage free guide. Uh, please like it. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe and I will see you very soon. My name is Katusha. Bye.